Excellent. Hello, Scott. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Kim. How are you? I'm doing awful, but all better now. <laughs> we'll make it all better today by yeah. throwing our favorite horror movie villain. Mm -hmm. Yo, you're already spoiling things. But first, uh, oh. my name is Kim Diaz Holm, also called an Unge Herr Holm. I make a lot of art for free youth. And uh, with me, I have my friend uh, Scott Christian Sava, who makes a lot of great art and videos. And we like to hang out and talk and draw and embarrass each other <laughs> once a month, every first Saturday of the month. So if you would like to see more of that, then do subscribe and do all that jazz. Now, for the first month, we, or for the first time, I mean, we have made a community poll where we asked what we should draw. And Scott's idea, would you just say what you, your idea was? I, mine was to draw our favorite anime character. Ooh. And mine was to draw our favorite horror villain. Yes, who won? <laughs> By a long shot. By a long <laughs> shot. I actually haven't checked the poll. It, it, I know uh, when since... I voted, it was like 25% to 75%. So uh, it, it was we overwhelming. We need to recheck the poll. Uh, <laughs> maybe a, a landslide has come in. I Who knows? It. I doubt it too. Uh, it seems villains are more popular than uh, heroes. <laughs> Who would have thunk? Ooh. Uh, hello, Vincent from the Netherlands. Thank you. <sighs> okay, so the results are Team Kim with uh, favorite horror villains, 75%. Team Scott with <laughs> Favorite anime hero, 25%. 25%. I'll get you next time, Kim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to, you need to step up your uh, voting game. You need yeah. to do some, uh, uh, some uh, gerrymandering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so Donna, Donna loves your painted nails. And so Thank in you. honor of, of, painting with you today she painted my nails Ooh. and uh, she painted them a nice gray i've never had Ooh. my nails painted um uh, I feel mine like is gray as well today oh nice we match nail bros nail bros <laughs> i feel i feel like when you put dogs uh, when you put little shoes on dogs and they keep kind of trying to shake it off that's what i feel like right now i keep trying to shake off the paint but uh, I'm not used to the <laughs> additional weight. <laughs> but mm. for now, we are nail bros. Nail bros, yes. Excellent. <laughs> Hello to All everyone right. in the chat. And, and we have Santa J. Claus in the chat. Hey, Even. Santa. Welcome. Mm. But shall we reveal our favorite... Uh, what we chose for our yes. favorite horror villain to draw. Do you want to go first? And, uh, and yeah. first, maybe tell a little bit about why you chose the thing you well, chose. I, I don't, build I don't... tension like it was <laughs> yeah. a horror movie. I I don't like horror movies. That might not be a shock to most of you. Uh, but I um I thought of the the, the scariest movies um, that I had seen. One was A Nightmare on Elm Street, but Donna won't let me draw Freddy Krueger. Um, and then the <laughs> other one was Poltergeist. Uh, but I looked up the house for Poltergeist, and it was such a boring house. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> no fun. So I thought, what, you know, what, what movies were horror movies that were kind of fun? And, uh, and so I thought, of the, <clears throat> I thought of the Lost Boys. And so I'm going to paint uh, Kiefer Sutherland as David uh, from the Lost Boys. So that's. I mean, I mean that that that's uh, halfway as horrible as uh, Kiefer Sutherland in Twenty Four. So that, that's a good choice. <laughs> what about you? 
Okay, so, so uh, for me, it it was really, really hard because I love horror and I love horror villains. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's not just a question of uh, which is the coolest villain or m- most iconic or best performance or best movie. It, it, it's also just which looks the coolest, which looks yeah. the freakiest, which is fun to draw. And I've drawn, you know, most people don't know this, but I do fan art on my own once in a while. And, and I've drawn, you know, a lot of my favorites I've drawn, like like um, uh, Vincent Price in Mask of Red Death, which is amazing. Mm. Uh, I, I've um, drawn Boris Karloff as uh, Frankenstein's monster, which again, amazing. Yeah. Uh, but one of my problems is, of course, I can't do any of them for free use. Yeah. Uh, and now on the streams with you, I do not care about free use. <laughs> I, I'll draw. Whatever you want me to draw, ooh, I almost spoiled it. And, uh, but luckily, the thing I chose to draw is also out of copyright. It is Nosferatu. Nosferatu. I love it. Because that is just such an iconic look and performance and a great movie. You know, it is it is still a creepy movie and that's yeah. difficult for a silent film so to do. my only exposure to nosferatu is the music video for under pressure that's the, o- <laughs> that's the only experience <laughs> i have with that that's the only that that's all i know of it like you know and then i think there was that movie with uh was it willem dafoe played yeah you know, and and I think I tried watching the movie. I wasn't that interested in it, but um, uh, that that that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so, but but it. I mean, it literally could have become any number of other horror. Oh, I characters. bet for you, yeah, it was a a feast. Yes. Of all of the things, you know, I, I, I was torn. Um, Jaws, Aliens. I almost did what Ooh. we do in the shadows, you know. <laughs> but I was Ooh. like, that's, you know, like I was like, ah, but um, I almost did Bram Stoker's Dracula. I've I've done. I mean, I uh, Bra- um, Stoker's Dracula w- would have worked for me as well. I think you know, yeah. Gary Oldman's performance there is one of my yeah. all time favorite performances. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. So, but um, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll draw Keeper Sutherland. That's that's always fun. So. <laughs> I'll never understand that. I mean, I mean you have uh, Gary Oldman, Gary Oldman with yeah. a lot of uh, weird makeup on and the yeah. fanciest hair ever. Yeah, and you got Keeper Sutherland with uh, you know what, what we in Norwegian call it hockey size. Uh, uh, hockey haircut. Oh, well, I, I, uh, to be fair, I've drawn them both. I painted them both in in the past. It's just uh, a mood thing today. But uh, uh, you're in a kefir mood. That's a good I'm mood. Kefir mood. Yeah. You're just keeping it real. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm. Uh, I, I'll let yourself out. Just, just you know. yeah. I'll let me. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You do the talking now. <laughs> Oh gosh! So uh, we have a lot of people here, which is great. Mm-hmm. Everybody, of course, is talking about my nails now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donna had fun painting them. How long have you been painting your nails? Me? Yeah. Uh, basically, since I was uh, uh, originally, since I was uh, 16, and then I took a break for, uh, I guess, 15 years. 
Okay. When I decided to uh, not focus on my appearance, but just try to get better from this bipolar thingamabob. Yeah. So, so that was the impetus to stop painting now. Oh, you already started penciling. Uh, well, you were talking. That, you, you were going yeah, on and that, I then I'll, started drawing. So. <laughs> then I'll, you know, try to catch you up. Catch I, up with you. You'll usually oh. do three drawings, three, you know, three finished. Yeah, I mean, by the time it, I it's one, already uh, <laughs> further along than you. The likeness yeah. is there. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncanny. Uh. Mm -mm. So, and it is right. i saw you did a video on, on negative space yeah people were asking me about it and um you know it's funny because i i, I didn't study it you know i wasn't good about it in school but you, you know, when you start talking about it you're like okay I, somewhere along the way i picked it up and um it was it was nice to kind of talk about it uh, and uh, work out some little thumbnails and and uh, do that. I liked it. Yeah. Of course, it's so weird going from shorts, which you know, in the first hour you'll have at least me. I'll, I'll, I will have a hundred thousand views, um, and I've and I've only had one long term long form video. I've made what 10, 10 or so. I've only had one go over a hundred. Most of them are sitting around. 15,000 and it's just so weird yeah. you're, you know to have 2 million followers and only 15,000 people have seen a video that you've made and um, you have shorts followers that, that's the thing yeah. Th those are not the same uh, yeah. and uh, but but I do think that that uh, long term it is uh, probably a lot better to move over to at least when you're trying to make uh, sort of evergreen content. Yeah, I hate yeah. the word content. I, <laughs> but you're trying to make something, or actually, you're trying to make something that's not content, something that's not merely to fill, yeah, a uh, container, but actually to have a life of its own and a use of its own, and to to have a worth in itself. Yeah. Then shorts is a difficult format. Because... It is. Uh, I, I've I've heard from a lot of people who are trying to get away from shorts because they um, they're just kind of like uh, candy. You know, it's, you get you get that little fix, and then you just scroll to the next one and scroll to the next one, scroll, but it, but there's no substance to it. Yeah. And so people, I, I, I've I've heard of that a lot of people are trying to move to just watching longer videos because there's more thought that goes into it. There's more depth to it, um, depending on the videos that you watch, I'm assuming. But um, I hope I'm doing Definitely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, that, you know, I think it's hard, but I do think, at least for me, I hope it's right. Uh, yeah. I'm not abandoning the, the shorts. I, I do like that format, but... but, but uh, um, to focus more on the long format is yeah. probably good. And I'm getting like, I'm getting 2,000 views, not 15,000 views. So, so um, that's uh, it sucks a little bit, but, but, but it's also if you compare how good I am, not good, but how experienced I am at making shorts to my lack of experience making longer format, which is harder. And it's not yeah. just twice the length isn't twice as hard. It's it's at some point it becomes exponential. Yeah. There's a and, lot uh, of trying to fill that empty space and try to make it um, not, not just filling empty space where you're actually saying yeah. something of some importance. And to say it in a, a rhythm that is, I mean, the rhythm of the short, 90% of the time is dump the dump the dump the dump the dump the dump the dump. Yeah. So that's all you can do. But if you try to do that in a 10 minute video, that, then 
I am sorry for your audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I've been really impressed with with how uh, easily you've uh, transitioned over to the long format, and, and I'm hundred uh, percent certain that 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 the the gods of the algorithms will pick it up. <laughs> Thank soon. you. Uh, and I only uh, mentioned the 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 negative space video because, of course, everything you say in it is wrong. <laughs> uh, well, I would love to hear your thoughts on negative space. Maybe you can make a video on it. I, 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 I've, I've started writing it, but I, <laughs> unlike you, I'm not pushing out, you know... Five videos every five minutes just to 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 fill the content bowl. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm struggling a lot more than you trying to adapt uh, to the the longer format. I'm just struggling the, the... emotionally. I, I yeah. you know, <laughs> I it, there there was that at least satisfaction of knowing that people were seeing your videos when you do the shorts. <clears throat> when you do the longer stuff, it's just like I spent ten hours on this video, <clears throat> and 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 you know no one seeing it. Where if I spent two hours on a short, I can get a million views, and and um, it's it's a it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I mean, but but, but I mean, if you swallow fifteen thousand of anything, it should be hard. Yeah, yeah. Oh. This is my mood lately. Oh. Too many bad jokes. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I'm a glutton for it. Uh, Donna's here, so let's see. Maybe she, do you have any? Oh. Okay. Everybody just loves that we're nail bros. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they liked the video on the negative space. Yeah, they're free to like it as long as they don't listen to it. That's uh, <laughs> all right. Tell me what's tell me point. what's wrong. Okay, so so, so uh, I like it. Uh, um, no, let's not lie. I got pissed off at a lot of things you said. <laughs> uh, uh, I like it. I understand your perspective. Uh, I disagree disrespectfully. Of course. Uh, I think that that um, you, you presented a very sort of um, uh, how. Can I say this? It, it is a limited view of negative space. Nice. Uh, because, yes, uh, the, the background is most of the time uh, negative space, of course. But um, the thing is, anything can be negative space because it is a matter of uh, the focal uh, item or the focal field. Yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, and that's something that's important to understand because then you can start while drawing, you can start using negative space as a measuring tool. Okay. Uh, uh, and what, what I mean by that is, for instance, if I'm going to draw, if I'm going to draw, uh, let's just draw on this fella here. It can be really tricky to draw this shadow shape because that is a difficult shadow shape. It yeah. goes all sorts of weird places. Uh, but if you've already drawn this nose shape, it can be a lot easier to take this little negative space, which is the light in this uh, area, yeah. and use that as a measuring tool. So you you go and you uh, sort of constantly while drawing you're deciding what the negative space is uh, when you're drawing 
yeah. and then you can sort of let it go afterward. And then, of course, in the composition itself, negative space is, as you were talking about, uh, the, the, the space around the figure, but it's also the space that leads your eyes to the correct, uh, to the right place. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah and you read uh, um, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Yeah. A and John Bushima has this these ridiculous uh, explanations in his art of how uh, and how to lead the eye of the reader. And, and he's sort of uh, saying that this composition is like a circle and this is a this is an arrow yeah, and this yeah. is yeah. I never understood that part. No, no, no. But but that took me years to get. Yeah. And suddenly I realized that what he's talking about that you don't get a single clue of in Stan Lee's text is he's talking about how the negative space manipulates your eye. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 and then these tapes start taking, um, making sense. Uh, but if you don't, uh, if, you, if you look at the positive space in those tapes, it, it, it looks like, you know, he's just, Putting random squigglies on top of yeah. the drawing, but but it it is actually they make sense if you look at everything except the shape he draws. Okay, 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 uh, and and so, so that's so, leading your eye to what's important. Yeah, and that's sort of you know the thing that made Jack Kirby such a magnificent storyteller. And uh, that John Bushima took from Kirby and, and did in another style, and it's what makes Frank Miller great, and it's uh, what makes um, you know, the comics I like all share that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we need uh, you to make a video about that to kind of expand on that. Yeah, I, I, but these are no, but see, these are these are stuff that I think the more we put this stuff out there, the more we're going to help. Because I, I, I don't, you know, I mean, people ask me, can you do one on values? Can you do one on shading? I'm like, God, I, I don't know. There's there's some stuff that you're like, oh, I, I could talk about that, and then there's other stuff where it's like, I can take a stab at it, but it's not really something I. You know, and I think a lot of us realize it's like we never feel like experts on something. Um, but excuse me. Oh, we have questions. Ooh. Okay. I saw that someone uh, asked, "Has Scott learned any Swedish from Kim?" And I would <laughs> love to uh, teach you some Swedish. Um, oh, gosh. The, the most important thing is to, whenever anyone says something, you say, oh. oh. If you agree, you say, oh. If you disagree, oh. you say, oh. That, that's all you need. Uh, I can except if, uh, except if you are puzzled uh, uh, by anything, uh, that, then you need to say, oh, for all, oh, for all. Oh. <laughs> I love it. All right, what's the question, dear? How do we not overthink things and just do something? I'll let you take that one, Kim. I've uh, I've never not overthunk something in my life. <laughs> uh, I I overthink things uh, uh, a lot. But uh, I, with experience, with with seeing, with with the experience of jumping into things that I haven't thought properly through, and also you know with experience of uh, jumping into th things I thought I had properly thought through and failing, you start getting sort of a sense for 
when when you shouldn't wait until you thought things through and when you should and it, it, it's not a hundred percent it's not uh, you know I still overthink most of my things and that's why I'm stuck like uh, with with you know I'm stuck halfway writing a video about negative space halfway writing a video about Judas Priest, halfway writing a video about uh, another about Dogen, halfway writing a video about hating Scott, uh, <laughs> halfway uh, writing a video about Pal World. And they're all halfway because I start overthinking. Um, but with experience, I get better at pushing myself to just... Uh, do just do it, as the poet said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 and um, to know when I can, because I I will never be satisfied. So so yeah. I can't wait until I feel satisfied that I'm ready because that time will never come. Yeah. So so yeah. You know, you, you start to get a sense of when you are ready enough. Not ready, yeah. but ready enough. Yeah, it's 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 um I think yeah, that's the thing that, that uh going onto TikTok and making art every day for the last almost four years um taught me to just um let go. It's just a piece of paper, um, and that helped me stop overthinking it. I, this, this, like, right, this. Immediately, I was like, "Oh, the eyes are looking the opposite way," and like, and I want to just throw it away and start over. And I'm like, it, wh "Why? Why? It's just a, it's just a piece of, you know, it's just a piece of paper. I'll finish it. I'll have had fun. Don't overthink it. Don't over worry about it. Um, learning to let go of perfection." is the thing you know when I, I think you and i have made enough pieces of art um to know that we'll never achieve perfection and no 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 and... no, no, no no the, the next one <laughs> the next one will the be next perfect one is gonna be it yeah. i i just i think i think i've i've finally come to that piece about going okay I'm, I'm never gonna it's never gonna be perfect stop trying to make stuff perfect and i there was actually a video i saw it was on TikTok. It was, gosh, probably back in 2020, 2021, um, of um, an artist who uh, was um, is a digital artist, and they were doing these wonderful environments, like you know, like a library or whatever it was, and it was um, very artsy. Uh, and uh, they had just mentioned that they were so terrified of doing environments. Um, because of all the perspective and the lines and whatnot, and because their lines were never straight, their perspective was never right, and it and they said it was when they accepted to have their lines be not straight, to have their perspective not be perfect, that their art had a you know had a char had character, it had that life of its own, and I think that just something in that really clicked, and when I started to go out and paint outdoors i stopped work like I, I don't use a ruler to uh to draw a building i just do it by freehand and um and i eyeball it and if the perspective isn't perfect it's not perfect it's just a sketch in my sketchbook um and i think a lot of times you just have to realize that um you're not doing a, a mechanical diagram that people are going to be using as a schematic to save the world you know it's like if, th if this is off by one millimeter you know everything it, it's just a drawing and and i think uh the that search for perfection is somehow inherently um elevating our, our the worth of our art more than it should be you know it's not that important it's just a drawing but sorry, yeah, but, 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 i think um i i recently saw an interview on rick beato's youtube with uh, Nuno Betancourt, the uh, guitarist from 
90s ballad sensation, Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> which which uh, he's an extremely good guitarist. Uh, and they were yeah. uh, uh, talking about um, what makes uh, you know, a good guitar solo and stuff like that. And he was talking about how when he was actually recording a solo, he couldn't sit. He had to jump up to move because that introduces the, the it, it introduces the body into the sound, and it also, you know, when you're moving with the music, you start making mistakes, and those mm. mistakes are beautiful, and those are. Uh, you know what makes it alive, um, mm. and, and I think you know for me, it, it, one of the fun things about drawing metal concerts is, you know, there's no way to not make mistakes. You have to involve your body. You know, it, it, it's it's such a visceral, it's such a physical, um, religious thing. Yeah, uh, and. It, and it isn't the perfection that makes it uh, uh, makes it beautiful. It is it is the faults, and yeah. it's really hard to see that in your own work. It's really easy to to see that in other people's work. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, you know, just looking at my favorite artists, I love their mistakes. All the time. Oh, th thank you. Oh, you weren't <laughs> talking about me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking about favorite artists. <laughs> yeah, and, no, you're and, right. And, you're right. Mm, and he was. Uh, they were also thinking about uh, talking about AI in, in that interview and uh, about how uh, you know. For people who make these mistakes and can play with their fingers and their body and their soul, then just bring it on. Yeah. And AI is just, it's not. The thing is, I, I absolutely love the mistakes of uh, AI. I mean, I think it's beautiful when uh, 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 AI tries to guess when you're expand. Uh, the background in Photoshop and the yeah. AI guess was <laughs> completely wrong, and when it, get, it can't draw the fingers and all of that stuff, and, and um, I think that is beautiful. I think that has value, and as AI gets better, you will remove that, and then AI starts becoming more dangerous because then it just becomes generic. Yeah, it becomes the average, and you know there are a lot of executives and idea men and money people who can't tell average from great. Yeah, and they will be more than happy cu cutting the cost and yeah. selling an average product. My problem isn't AI. the executives. My problem is mm -hmm. the the the. Uh, the average everyday person who will also think that that's good. So if the executives start churning crap out through AI and people are just like, oh, this is so great. You know, look how the, the, the thing is, look how realistic it is. <laughs> it's the thing that people and you're just like that. That's and, and And that's I worry about the dumbing down of the world. That's what I worry about is is if if. You know, our world starts churning out AI lifeless stuff and the masses feed on that. And they consider that, well, this is my entertainment now and I'm totally okay with it. I feel like as artists, it's our job to keep pushing and, and, and striving for hopefully something better than something lifeless, you know? Uh, that's what art has always been. It's it's 
pointing pointing a, a mirror back on the you know on the world and all of its weirdness. I don't think a computer can do that adequately. No, I, I mean the thing is, um, I I've started playing around with AI and I, 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 I'm having so much fun with it. Yeah, and it <laughs> it is uh, uh, it is just it, it is brilliant in all its stupidity. And it's also, you know, really powerful tools for making uh, things quicker and better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can use it like that. But there is something fundamental about how you are interacting with AI. And I think you... you, you Probably, I'm not going to psychoanalyze you too much, but but, but when you worked on Animal Cracker, yeah, um, when instead of sitting down and drawing something yourself, you tell people to do it, and they come back yeah. with something. Yeah. That's the feeling you get from making AI art. Yeah. When they, yeah. When, except, you know, if you're a decent person, you will treat your employees like uh, decent humans, even when they don't deliver something perfect for you. Yeah. And you will also not take credit for they, their work when they do make something yeah uh, amazing for you but what you see in a lot of artists who get bigger and, and directors and stuff like is that they're losing some of their humanity in uh, in um, being so used to thinking that creativity is waiting for others to do something and then being pissed off or taking credit for it. Yeah, yeah. A and that's the feeling you get when you sit and you prompt the AI again and again. And instead of going like, oh, I really wanted this Nosferatu to turn out well, but I, I'm, it's, I, I can't do this. I'm, I'm not good enough. I need to be better. Instead, you go, oh, you stupid machine. Oh, I hate <laughs> you, machine. Oh, you're the worst. Yeah. And people who are not in a creative field already will, and especially, you know, uh, money people, will confuse that feeling for creativity. Yeah, yeah, that frustration uh, they think is is the frustration of creating something. Yeah, the thing is, the frustration of creating something is something that gives you a personal growth. Yeah, you grow as a person by enduring the creation of something. You might grow in the wrong way. You might, you know, grow to be a, a moron, but but you grow. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, but with the creativity that comes from default using AI, you don't grow. There is nothing. Yeah, the, the process I've... is the opposite of creativity. Yeah, I've seen people say, "Well, you don't understand how much time I put into getting the art just right." You know, coming up with just the right. Prompt. That's not work, though. You know, it's like saying it is, and it, it is very frustrating work. And yeah. uh, and I'm sure that you know people who uh, who are truly creative people who embrace AI and play around with it will figure out ways to be creative with it uh, that I can't even imagine at this point. Um, and, and they will do wonderful stuff with it. But it, it is uh, the, 
the people who aren't <laughs> quite yeah. conscientious enough will think will will get a reason to think they're being creative, while e while in reality they're just learning to be a dick. <laughs> it, it, uh, and this is something that that might be funny, but I've started whenever I use AI and I use it a lot now to. Whenever I write a script, I uh, give it to an AI afterwards to rewrite it shorter, and then I take what the AI rewrote shorter and rewrite some of uh, that into my script to make mine shorter. I'd never take the text and copy and paste because that doesn't work. It, it's not my voice, but I yeah. uh, use it as a, a lousy editor. But I always say thank you. To the AI, yeah, yeah. I sometimes uh, do that with Siri. Uh, I, you know? I compliment it, and I think that that's important because yeah. if we don't do that, we will start thinking that that we we when we normalize talking to AIs, and if we don't say thank you, we will train ourselves to be bastards to people in real life as well yeah. so instead of not saying thank you to ai i'm taking this as an excuse to start saying thank you to a rock for being good to sit at thank you yeah. to the wind for uh, feeling great yeah. thank you to thank you to mother nature and to this holder of dirty water for keeping my water safe today. Thank you. And and it sounds silly, but I, I, I mean it. it, it is, uh, I think if, if people don't do that, I think we'll see AI uh, make people even more socially awkward. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I'm always right. <laughs> that's that's one of uh, one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I'm gonna put some watercolors on this. Okay, so I'm Donna. I'm sure we have a lot of questions. Uh, what your what is your favorite fine liner pen? Mine, of course, is always the zebra brush pen. You have, uh, one? yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, my very favorite uh, uh, fine liner pen is, is the ones that burn in hell and turn <laughs> to ashes because only. Weaklings use pens, <laughs> uh, but I've always been uh, uh, comfortable with you know the basic um, pilot pen, uh, uh, the which head is, is it? The, the the head with the two holes on each side. Uh, Techni uh, techno point. Techno point. Okay. It, it is. Uh, I, I like the peeling of. Working with that. By the way, the Nosferatu looks amazing, and I love the use of negative space. The, the, Thank the, you. The, the ear on our right is uh, so nice. Hmm. Now it's just not to mess it up, <laughs> or mess it up. Oh, correct. Uh, they want to know if you clean your brushes. Oh no no no. <laughs> uh clean my brushes. No, no, God forbid. Um I used to buy really expensive brushes like uh Winsor Newton Series 7. Fantastic brush. I absolutely love that brush. Uh but uh I found that for me it's better to not uh use such good brushes and buy, you know, cheap. Uh, synthetic hair brushes, um, 
student grade brushes. A a and because then I I don't feel as guilty when I forget to clean them and I, I don't have to I still have to apologize to my brushes, of course. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I'm not meaning to imply that brushes are less worth than AI. So, so I am sorry for the abuse I put them through. <laughs> but, but, but the abuse costs me a little less. Yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, look at this. It's not. This isn't. You can't see it. You can see it now. This isn't how a brush is supposed to. <laughs> this is brush abuse. It still has a point, though. How did you get? How do you get it to keep the point? Uh, the point comes and goes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, I've tried those brush shapers, and it they did not work at all. It's like a glue, yeah, it, waxy kind of thing. You you dipped it in and yeah. No, 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 that, that doesn't work. At least yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> okay, so I will tell you about it. Um, <laughs> you know those uh, brush shapers? Don't they don't work. work? Yeah. yeah, no. What oh, I'm wondering wanna... now is, you know, I I want to do something black here. To, to give the shadow of the the body, but I don't want it too much. So just a little. I, I, I love it the way it is. I wouldn't touch it, honestly. That's just me personally. But I I think I think. Yeah, but, but the way now you're. Uh, I mean, this th is. Now you just hey, but, told me that I have to do it. <laughs> hey, what do I know? You know, <laughs> negative space. You know. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can mute. Uh... Okay. So what I will do is I will leave it up to the gods. I will overload my brush with ink and close my eyes and do like. And yeah. I think this. So the next question is, what supplies do we use? And what are the cheapest I, I, ones? I just want to say, look what you forced me to do. <laughs> you did. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I actually started uh, doing uh, the supply list on my long form videos, just oh, like nice. Scott does, I think. And uh, uh, so, so now you have a supply list on all my videos. But but the truth is that I don't. There are very few things I religiously buy. I, I if my local art store has a new brand of paper I haven't tried that looks interesting, I will go for that. And. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm currently using this is the Alfjärke uh, student grade brush. Alfjärke is a great Norwegian brand. Then I have uh, probably this is an this is an Amsterdam brush, and then I have um, one from Daler and Rowney. And I, you know, so so I have all these different. Uh, things that I just try out and see if I like it. If I like it, then I'll probably buy it again someday. The only thing that is really hasn't changed in uh, a few years is uh, I buy the 
Talents Indian Inc. Uh, for the very uh, practical reason that it's the only brand in my local art store that comes in liter bottles. Because you got through it so quickly. Yeah. And also I use um, white acrylic from uh, Golden's uh, because from Golden fluid acrylic because I just find that it works uh, better than any other fluid acrylic I've found. I bet. I bet. It's you know it's not cheap. But that's sort of one of the things it, 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 for me is that you know there are places where you can save money. I mean, ink, for instance, doesn't have to be. Uh, it just has to be an ink that you like. Yeah. Oh. Just two seconds. I'll be okay. Does anybody in the live know what Kiefer Sutherland's eye color is? Red. <laughs> Interesting that we both chose uh, vampires. Yeah, they are. They are the coolest. Yeah, I think so. Villains. I mean, I mean, in terms of just being a villain, it works. Yeah. Uh, you didn't answer uh, about your supplies. Oh. Also about cheap supplies. Yeah. Um, I, for me, um, yeah, it's the zebra brush pen. Uh, that's $2.65. It's my favorite pen because I'm not a real artist uh, like Kim. Um, and then uh, I, I love... <laughs> the spite in your voice there was uh, magnificent. <laughs> I, 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 my favorite, um, sketch pad is the Be Creative watercolor pad. It's $15 and I just love the texture of it. Uh, it's hundred percent cotton paper and it just makes, makes my art feel pretty. And, uh, but other than that, I'll use any pencil. I like a four H pencil. I like a hard pencil and, uh, any eraser. And, How can um, you be so wrong? <laughs> Our <laughs> pencils you, you are, are against God's will. I know you and I are so opposite on so many <laughs> things. It's hilarious. Um, oh. But um, yeah, you know, so it, it, those are those are pretty much it. You know, I I'm not married to um, any kind of pencil. Or, or, but like I said, the, the the be creative sketchbook and the zebra brush pen are my two go to. As far as watercolors, I use. Did I lose contact with you? No, I'm still here. Did you lose me? Oh, he froze. Can you hear me? I'm not hearing Scott. Uh, hopefully, you. Oh, hey, I can see Scott. I can see Scott, but I can't hear anything. Can you hear me, dear? So you can't hear me. Is that okay. my problem? Can you hear me? Okay. How about now? I just muted and unmuted myself. We can hello, see hello, hello, and hello. hear both of you. Okay. Then maybe it's my problem. Sorry. Okay. So now you can't hear me, Donna. No, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So you can hear me now or no? Okay, okay. Okay, so let's see if I can hear you now. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, hello. I, uh, it was just my Bluetooth. <laughs> okay. It, it, 
Yeah, my Bluetooth got freaked out by uh, Kiefer Sutherland's eye color. <laughs> All right. Let me give him his blue eyes. Oh, when you turn into a vampire. Okay. Well, fortunately, he's still handsome. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> In an evil sort of way, yeah. The handsomification of vampires. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Be because I people... Hmm? Bella Lugosi, I think, did that, right? Now it, it, it starts uh, even before that, because yeah. the first uh, modern vampire story is called The Vampire with uh, uh, a Y, and there, uh, the Italian writer, I don't remember his name, takes it was conceived the same night that uh, Frankenstein was conceived, with the the story of the the uh, Percy Shelley and Mary Shelley and uh, Lord Byron and also this Italian guy who I've forgotten the name of um, spends the summer uh, at a cabin and or at a mansion. And there's this huge stormy night, and they come up with this bet on who could make the uh, scariest story, and Mary Shelley wins, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah. But uh, oh, Polidori is his name. Polidori writes The Vampire, and he basically writes Lord Byron as a vampire. Mm. Uh, uh, and it's about um, Lord Byron being a manipulative asshole, but very pretty. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the Dracula uh, novel so, so comes Brom's, a little Brom's bit later. Came later. Mm -hmm. Okay, came that later. came uh, later and builds on that uh, and makes the vampire even more sexy. Oh. And then, it, it, and then there's a little step back with Nosferatu. Some would say I would be, I am inclined to disagree. It's he's got his charm. <laughs> it may be not typical, but you wouldn't call it boyish good looks, <laughs> I guess. And then you know, then you get uh, um, and rise with even sexier uh, vampires, and you get the Lock Boys, which is just uh, '80s. Uh, it's the boy band of vampires. Oh yeah, yeah. It's the new kids on the undead block, <laughs> new kids in the churchyard, and. Um, uh, then you finally get uh, the sparklies in uh, in uh, the, 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 uh, Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. Yes. Well, and don't it's, forget uh, it's interview been a... with a vampire with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Oh yes. Oh. And, and uh, there's been some setbacks, like like uh, Kiefer Sutherland's makeup. Yeah. Uh, and also all the makeup vampires in Buffy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but they were really hot. I mean, <laughs> but this this hotification of the vampire has basically been going on since the start. So so them starting to sparkle is just a logical step in the same direction that Bram yeah. Stoker's Dracula stepped in. Uh, and the next will be Rainbow Disco Vampires, and it will be glorious. <laughs> With painted nails. With painted... I mean, seriously, if you're a vampire and you don't paint your nails, I mean, yeah. 
You even vampire, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You even vampire, bro. I like that. Uh, I don't like that you made me do those dark shapes. Sorry, I made you do what? You made me put in those yeah, shapes. Yeah, it was so. I liked it better with all that empty space. <laughs> we call you know, us professionals call it negative space. Well, what do I know about negative space? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> um, all right, I have to fill in this black here. Um, I, I, I'm actually uh, thinking of uh, you know, studying your art a little bit more because I think that you are really good at capturing even a wonky eyed Kiefer Sutherland's <laughs> likeness. <laughs> he is wonky eyed, but you see that it's him. Yeah. You see it very quickly. And I, I've i set myself a new artistic goal, and that is to be able to capture someone's portrait likeness in uh, while they are talking and moving in 10 to 15 minutes. Wow. I, I, I don't know if I could do that. I, I was... Oh, well, it will be portrait like just like this. It will be mine. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's the key is to come up with your style um, and not try to make it look exactly like the person to try to find just the, the, I, I've always been so fascinated with uh, cartoonists, caricature artists yeah. who could do that. And it's such an amazing art to say, capture just someone's likeness with so few lines. Who was that artist? Was it Hirschfeld? Is that the right name? They used to do is like they they did uh all the people from Broadway, um, just very simple, like almost like a continuous line. Uh, portraits. Oh yeah, I think this rings a bell. I don't. Uh... Someone in the live, help me out. Hmm. Is, is the name Hirschfeld? But, the, you know, they, they would do these amazing portraits of actors on Broadway and stage and screen, and, and it would just be amazing, you know. But um, how hmm. does Scott get the perfect wash? Mine always say, oh, um, it, it, that is, uh, with watercolors, it's just uh, to dry before you do the next layer so they don't. Uh, mix, um, but also the paper makes a big deal. Okay, yeah. Uh, Hitomi says Alan Hirschfield. Oh, I had it right. But, I'll check uh, him out. Yeah, um, they, they're they're you know with just it's the simplicity is just amazing, and um, and 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 I've always wanted to be able to do that, but I you know like I've tried caricature many times. And I think I did okay, but it just always felt so forced. But I just, I so admire people who can just do a little doodle, do a little sketch, and you go, oh, that's this person. That's that. Me, I feel like I yeah. have to get it at least 90% right. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you don't yeah, really but, 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 but you'd still be interested uh, to study in that regard because you do... Uh, you have this uh, uh, very, you know, comic booky, very uh, um, classic uh, comic book style, um, superhero comic style. Uh, that's, yeah. and you still get the likeness. So, so, and there's something in that, knowing how the the faces are built, and then taking that. And combining it, I think what I want to do is combine it with a little bit of stuff like Hirschfeld and uh, uh, 
newspaper cartoonists. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that, and also a little bit of uh, the more traditional portrait uh, yeah. tradition. Uh, to take those elements, and also to take the elements of um, cheap, like ten, twenty dollar street uh, cartoonists. Yeah, street portrait artists, because they. The, uh, the thing I figured out when I, uh, many moons ago, when I sat on the street drawing, I mostly did backgrounds, you know, landscapes and stuff like that. Okay. But, but uh, um, once in a while, people would ask for a portrait. And, um, and people who ask for portraits on the street don't know how they look. <laughs> so the few times where when I've nailed the 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 portrait or the caricature, they were pissed off. One guy oh. uh, uh, threatened to hit me unless he got his money. <laughs> Beat me up unless he got his money back, and I nailed that port. That that was the best street caricature I've ever done, and I was almost beat up for it. <laughs> So, so, so the trick that street artists, street caricature uh, artists have figured out is how to draw something that has enough of a likeness without uh, uh, offending. It looks yeah. like something on TV, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, and 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 to take some of that and not necessarily make it look like something on TV, but make it look like something in a portrait gallery, yeah. but still loose and expressionistic and cartoony. I think there's a combination there that that I want to try to find. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of a evolution of the concert art drawing. I love uh, the concert art drawings. I love that. But but it, it's it's. I realized it while I was drawing Tony Harnell from TNT, uh, the great Norwegian metal legends <laughs> of the eighties. <laughs> Uh, I love that you're doing that. And, and he was doing a, um, a, a, a an acoustic storytelling night show, and I thought I nailed. I thought I did a good job, and uh, uh, he was super gracious and super friendly and nice and everything, and. and it, but when I showed him the art, uh, oh, I love it. It doesn't look like me. <laughs> uh, and as he said, uh, said it or wrote it, we, 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 he, he had the flu, so I, we didn't get to talk. But yeah. as he wrote it, I just said, oh, shit, he's right. And really? it, it was that, that little, it had a lot of that, those um, superficial traits of him but it didn't have that little ooh that is him yeah it didn't have that little spark yeah and uh, mm. uh ever since then i've just sort of decided that yeah i need to get that i need uh. to 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 get the thing that where you go yeah he might have been hit in the middle of the face with a baseball bat uh, as a kid, but he's still Keeper Sutherland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm trying to compliment you, but I'm being an <laughs> asshole. Instead. I, 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 I was the one who pointed it out. I, I knew it as soon as I did it. I was like, nope, those eyes are off. Um, yeah. But, uh, I think they but, call but it, it being walleye. It is still, yeah. That is, 
that's uh, one of the best characters from one of the best movies, uh, Hot Shots. Isn't that Walleye? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back when, uh, what was his name? Um, Martin Sheen. Or, uh, Charlie, Charlie Sheen. Sheen. Charlie Sheen was a commodity. Yes. Oh, I loved Charlie Sheen. A bit harder to love now. Yeah. But, but uh, oh, he was perfect in those movies. And also, Harry Elves as the uh, um, antagonist. Yeah. As the, uh, he's just magnificent. It is <laughs> even better than in The Princess Bride. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far. Let's not get crazy. But... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hot Shots, Carrie Elves' greatest role. It, 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 it's just the way it is. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I feel like I was really slow today. I w- we, we took our time. You, we took your our time. Hmm. Well, it's funny. You were like, oh, no, you got a head start on me. <laughs> and then you still finish yours <laughs> before me, and you're like, I felt like I was slow. <laughs> so. um, uh, that's one of the things that I'm also working on now is uh, to be slower sometimes. Yeah. No, these are these are okay. always fun to just kind of just hang out and just doodle, you know. Um, yes. And it's nice to see you do something that's um, like like Nosferatu, like do some sort of likeness. Um, it's Zelda, a very you know. vague likeness. I think I. Yeah, I uh, haven't finished the Zelda piece yet. Uh, <laughs> you you didn't finish? I thought we finished it during the live. Uh, no, it's here. What more is there uh, to do? The thingamabobs. <laughs> I need to do some things here and some things there and probably some things around here. It's perfect. And there's all these things. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna do to it what you just did to the Nosferatu. It was fine, and you just noodled it. But now I have to uh, do it. <laughs> uh. Uh, it is a very childish impulse that I do have whenever. Someone says to me, like, no, I, I don't think I should. Uh, I don't think you should do that. Oh, yes, I should. Now I have to. And it's um, it's not a good tendency, but it's fun. Um... Yeah. You, you are okay. hilarious. All right, honey, you said there was one more question, or? Oh, they want to see our nails mm-hmm. together. And everybody says Nosferatu looks great. Thank you. And just because you said that, I have to play some more random dots on it. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it till you guys stop complimenting me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks finished. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. Um, it, it is. Uh, it is a disease. This art thing. Yeah. I've. I've. I'm very proud of myself because I've. I finally learned to let pieces just kind of go. Actually, I think I've always been pretty good at that. Um, and I think a lot of that is um, 
I get to a certain point with a piece where I go, I want to do something else. I get bored very quickly. Oh. Yeah, I know the feeling. So for me, it's like I can't be done with a piece quick enough. Yeah. Uh, that 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 sort of harkens back to what we said about uh, AI. Is the impatience you get from waiting for an AI to give you the right response to your prompt? Yeah, that that is a m- much less. Um, healthy sort of impatience. And and when you are working with art, with creativity, with actually producing something, you sort of have to you have to find your relationship with your impatience. Yeah. And I don't know if you have to do that in the same way with AI or with uh, um, with uh, commissioning art or anything like that. I think it is unique to 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 the creative process. You yeah, have to yeah. Be very much in communication with your impatience. That's true. That's true. I, I've, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm very proud of myself for being able to do that. I don't know why I just suddenly, um, uh, it clicked to go, this is done. Move on. Move. This is done. Okay, apparently we have 334 people in the live right now. So, hello, Ooh. everybody. We were um, painting our favorite horror movie villains. Um, I did David from The Lost Boys, and it looked I like did Chuck I, from Nosferatu. Yeah. <laughs> Dave and <David>. Chuck. <laughs> it's not really, his last name wasn't Chuck, was it? It's, yeah, yeah, a little known fact: uh, David is actually uh, Chuck's great nephew. <laughs> and uh, we also painted our. Well, your nails are always painted, right? Yeah, but most of we the are, time. Yeah, we are nail nail buddies. Yeah, we we you could say that we nailed. <laughs> The nails. <laughs> you could, but um, you could. It would be really bad. Uh, See, I'm very glad I didn't say we nailed it because then it would. I mean, yeah, yeah. Then we would have to start baking cakes. <laughs> This is something uh, for everybody who's here. This is something that we do once a month together on Kim's channel. And um, we always have fun. Uh, I know that uh, we're going to let you guys decide. You think we should give them four options next time? Rather than two? Yeah. I mean, we we can... uh... I know that a lot of people were uh, asking us to do a combination of the options this time. So we could do four and have to do a combination of the two most popular ones. Mm. That would make it hellish. (laughs) So like take our favorite horror villain, but in an anime style? Yeah. Oh, God. Or a horror villain uh, meeting the anime hero or something like that. (laughs) 
so so the next based on um, on what people vote on, then next month it could be uh, your favorite uh, Kiefer Sutherland role, but as a potato. <laughs> I'm starting to not like you anymore, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you ever liked me. That's the... <laughs> uh, oh gosh! Well, I think Kiefer Sutherland has a uh, hay fever. Yeah, I, I'm getting. See, I'm doing what you're doing. So I'm I'm sitting here a- adding <laughs> stuff that I shouldn't be doing because. I'm yeah. To... All right, we'll consider that he's done. He's, this yeah. was very fun. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, time to stop wrecking our art, Scott. Yes, <laughs> let's stop noodling these. Uh, uh, keeper well, I... the red nosed vampire, <laughs> did a lot of girls in town. Uh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, uh, this was fantastic as always. Uh, this was so fun. Yeah, Kim, thank you for hanging out with me and uh, everybody. All 353 of you, thank you for hanging out with us. And I promised Donna we would do one more. These are our nails. Donna painted my nails, and it just so happens that it matches Kim's nails. So, nail Mm. nail friends. Uh, Nail friends. (laughs) Uh, And then, uh, yes, please follow Kim uh, for all of his wonderful, wonderful uh, art and... um, yeah, uh, that's all I got. Yeah, don't follow Scott. He has too many already. Yeah. Oh, uh, please yeah. follow Scott. Uh, uh, and <laughs> also, do check out Scott's um, uh, newer long-form videos because he's uh, uh, been taking the plunge into making long-form content and he's really good at it. Uh, and all the videos are really, you know, they're great. They're personal personal they are informative and it just you learn a lot from them as long as they're not about negative space negative space <laughs> and kim will be will be giving a rebuttal video soon i'm sure <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> uh, well, okay all... this was so much fun and uh, thank you all for coming and thank you so much scott uh, for giving us Kiefer the red nosed vampire. <laughs> bye. Oh, thank you. Bye.